Welcome. You know in chess there are three parts of the game. The opening phase, the middle game phase, and the end game phase. While a lot of people think that the opening phase is the most important part of the game, I disagree. I think it's very important to understand and know the end game. Why? Because you can work very hard throughout the entire game to achieve a good end game, and by not knowing how to play the end game, the game can result in a draw or you may even lose. That's why I think the end game part is a very important part of the game of chess. In this DVD, Susan would demonstrate and show to you all the most important end game positions. You can take a look at it one at a time, and if you don't feel like you understand it, you can pause the DVD, play it out for yourself until you get it. Well, I think after watching this DVD, you would feel a lot more comfortable about the end game phase and will make you a much better player. Good luck. Welcome. On this DVD, we shall learn about the basics of chess endgames. What is a chess endgame? Endgames are positions when there are few pieces left on the board. Most of them are already exchanged. In order to win a chess game, you need to know how to checkmate. Or on the other side, how to avoid it. That's what we're going to learn. In the first chapter, we shall see how to checkmate a lone king. Let's see. In our first position, we see a sample position where white has a king and a queen, while black only has a king. Now, in a situation like this, black's goal should be to try to stay in the middle of the board, as far from the walls, from the edge of the board as possible. Because the only way to checkmate the black king here is to force it to the edge of the board. Doesn't matter, first rank, a file, H file, or the eighth rank. That's our first goal. Step number one is forcing the king to one of those squares, any of them, doesn't matter which one. Next step is we want to make sure the king will stay there next to the wall and cannot cross back out towards the middle of the board. Third step, only then we bring our king to help because without the help of the king, it is impossible to checkmate the king. And then the last step, checkmate. Now, in this position, there are more than one ways to checkmate. But I'm going to show you first the most systematical way, the safest way. That's how I do the checkmate even today. Even though there may be quicker ways, the computer will tell there are faster checkmate. But nevertheless, I'd recommend you to learn it the safest, the systematic way. And let's see the moves now. The first move is queen f3. As you can see, this move restricts the black king's mobility to a smaller space than it was before. Also, you can notice the distance between the white queen and the black king is like an L shape. Now, let's say black tries to stay in the middle of the board because that's where it's impossible to checkmate it. As we know, we need to force it to the side or end of the board. Let's see how that works. King e5, and now we're following the black king, queen g4. As you're noticing, we're not giving checks, but making quiet moves, restricting the black king to smaller and smaller space. Black is still trying to stay in the middle of the board, and we are following, like a shadow, the black king. King e6 and queen g5. We are taking away more and more space squares from the king. King d6 and again we are following the king. Queen f5, king back to e7 and queen to g6. Again the same distance between the white queen and the black king that L shape. King d7. And again, queen f6, let's say king c7, and queen e6. 
Now the black ink has only one square to move to. Now here is when we have to be real careful. As soon as the king has only one or two squares to move to, we want to make sure we're avoiding stalemate. Because stalemate ends the game in a draw. And that definitely would not be fun when we are ahead of queen. So white needs to be careful. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake by taking it a little bit longer and making checkmate in three moves instead of two or five instead of three. However, if you make stalemate, the game is over and you lost half a point, it's a draw. Therefore, in this position, it would be a blunder, a big mistake to play king to b7, because now the black king has no place to go whatsoever. That's when stalemate happens, when the king or none of the other pieces can move, and it's black's turn in this case, that's stalemate. So king b7 would be a big blunder. The correct move is step number two, making sure the black king stays at the end of the board, at the edge of the board, by playing queen f7, still the same system, following the king. Now we made sure the black king has one square to move to at least, and that is king c8. And now step number three, we are bringing the king to help. King a7, again, we might have to make sure the king has at least one square to move to. And again, white needs to be careful not to move to b7 or b8, then it would be stalemate in either case. However, move to b6, which leaves the c8 square clear for the black king, allowing white to checkmate in two ways, try to figure that out, either queen c7, where the white king is protecting the queen, therefore black cannot capture it, checkmate, or the queen can simply move down to e8 also with checkmate. After seeing the first example, here white's job is easier, because the black king is already at the end of the board. So we can right away start with step number two, namely making sure the black king stays there and doesn't run back out to the middle of the board. So first move is queen a7, cutting the king off, making sure it stays on the eighth rank. Now the black king can run either direction. And now we're ready for step number three, which means bringing the king. And all black can do is go back and forth on the 8th rank, either to c8 or e8. Doesn't really matter because we are bringing the white king closer, king d8, and we're bringing the king closer, and king c8. We are bringing the king closer. Again, remember, this is where you should not play king e7 because that would be stalemate. That's the only thing you really need to watch out for. However, king d6 and after king d8, again, white has number of ways to checkmate, namely three different ways to checkmate, either by simply moving down to a8, b8, or the third way, lining them all up on the same file with queen d7 checkmate. In this position, there is a small difference compared to our first two examples namely that black has an extra pawn. Why that is important? Because now we don't need to worry about the danger of stalemate, because black has a pawn that can move. While it's true, we could capture that pawn right away with our queen in this position, but that would make the game last quite a bit longer. Since we don't need to worry about the stalemate, we can bring our king right away, king h2, it doesn't matter that the black king cannot move as long as there is another piece that can move. And the only piece that can move is the little pawn, a4. And now, again, we're bringing our king closer to help the queen. Black moves the pawn. And now we again have a choice of checkmate in two various ways, either queen f2 or 
queen d1. Now that we learned how to checkmate with the queen, we'll go to rooks. And right away two rooks, how lucky we are. Well, if you got to this position, you're only three moves away from checkmate. Now, the trick here is that we're using always one of the rooks to cut away the crossing of the king. In this case, the rook on b5, we're leaving there and using the other rook to give the check. Rook c6. Now the king must go towards the edge of the board. Down. Now we're keeping the rook on c6 to cut away on the 6th rank. And the second rook on the b file to give the check. Pushing the king further to the edge of the board. And now when the king moves down, again the rook on the c file gives the check. And that's checkmate. Thanks to the edge of the board, the king cannot go further down. That's called the ladder method of checkmating with two rooks. In our second example with the rooks, it's even simpler. Now that you know what's the goal, to make sure the king is stuck at the edge of the board, here we only need two moves to checkmate. One move, making sure the king stays on the eighth rank. We can move rook down to d7, and any move black makes, going either to f8 or h8. After either of them, the other rook comes down to c8, checkmating. That was real simple, right? Let me show another example where the king will not be forced down to the 8th rank, but for a change to the a file. Here, the first step is to cut the king off from the majority of the squares. We want to make sure it stays close again to the side of the board. So after rook c1, black can, let's say, move king b3, stopping our rook from right away cutting it off to the a file. So let's see, what do we do after king b3? Again, there are many ways to win here, but again, let me show the most systematic way of doing it. We want to have the rooks in a distance from the king, so the king cannot attack our rooks easily. So next move is bringing the rook all the way to h8. Trying to give a check to be on b8, forcing the king to the a file. Now, let's say black attacks our other rook by playing king b2. Now again, we want to move that rook as far as possible from the king to c7. Not to c8 though, because then the two rooks would bother each other, would be in each other's way. To rook c7, and now king b3. Again, we're using the same method. The rook on the c file is cutting off the king, and the second rook is checking the king, forcing it to the side of the board, and now again the second rook checks and checkmates.